Hi everyone, good morning. Um, who here uh, has heard about DevSecOps before? Okay, a few hands. Who here actually understand what it means? Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. So yeah, uh, my name is Magno, also known as Magno Logan. Uh, I'm not from here, right, I'm from Brazil. Uh, so, a few disclaimers. Sorry for my English. If you don't understand something that I say, you can ask me later, no problem. So yeah, um, I focus a lot of uh, on application security. I have a developer background. Uh, I'm currently working for Skip the Dishes as a security analyst. Right. We have a few positions available. Um, I've spoken at a few uh, conferences in Brazil. Um, I founded a WASP chapter there and organized a security conference there as well. So, yeah, that's my main focus uh, right now. Uh, I'm originally from a city called João Pessoa in Brazil. So, if you ever want to visit there, just talk to me. Okay. Um, so, uh, software development for me, is, I, I believe it's like a MMO RPG game. So it never ends. So you're always trying to uh, create new features, fix bugs, and improve your software. So it's the same thing, like the, the game, you're try always trying to improve your character and doing quests and stuff. So I think that's a good analogy. But the problem is that uh, security usually uh, becomes a bottleneck when we try to ship code and uh, create software faster, right? So if... Uh, in the current state and uh, like the agile methodology that we're using, uh, we can't be uh, doing that anymore. Otherwise, the company won't make money, right? If we take like two weeks, three weeks to do a pen testing and provide some results, that's not feasible for a company that's uh, deploying software every day in production, right? So yeah, that was, uh, first there was a waterfall methodology for uh, writing code and developing software. And that was a slower process, so that was uh, acceptable, before, acceptable before. But now everything became agile, and it's like we also need to adapt ourselves to follow the pace of the developers and the development life cycle so we can uh, ship code faster but in a secure manner, right? So if you ever took a, like a programming course or a developer course in college or somewhere, you always try to make your software work. You don't, sometimes you don't know how it works and it's like you don't care a lot about security. So if it was, it's working, ship it, right? Um, but that's not uh, acceptable anymore, right? Um, and we tend to think that developers are not worried about security. And usually they are, they just don't have the proper training. Uh, they never learn about secure coding, right? They learn about programming. Um, so usually that's uh, a problem that happens uh, in companies uh, before where uh, the developer uh, wrote their code and uh, it works in, in their machine or in the developer environment and then they ship it to production and it doesn't work there. Maybe because it's consuming a lot of memory, it's breaking somewhere, it's, it's missing a, a dependency or something. So that why the DevOps uh, culture or methodology was created to try to integra integrate those teams so they can uh, better work together and ship software faster, right? And create value uh, to the company. So yeah, uh, just a few things about DevOps, right? Uh, it focuses a lot on automation, right? And the integration of those teams. And one of the things that I think it's important is uh, increasing the feedback. So everything that you do, you receive a feedback if it's okay or not from the tools that you're using. So you can uh, keep going. Otherwise, if you see a problem, you can fix right away. So break some, something like, okay, break the build if there is a vulnerability or something, right? 
But a lot of companies that are doing DevOps, they are not focusing on security. Although uh, some authors argue that um, security is already included in the DevOps culture and it's part of it, uh, they are not really focused on it. So, um, what about security, right? Um, working? Hello? It's not working? Oh, okay, good. Sorry. Um, so um, it has been proven that if you uh, find vulnerabilities on the early stages of the software lifecycle, right, it's um, easier and also cheaper to fix those bugs. So why we're not doing that yet on every code that we write, right? So yeah, I think that that's why it was the, the new name, DevSecOps, was created. Uh, to emphasize the need for security in this new uh, culture change and methodology called DevOps, right? Uh, there are many different names, I think, that they mean basically the same thing. So uh, there are some discussions about it. I won't get into that in this talk, but I think it's important to, to know about them. But I think, yeah, basically, the, the main goal here is try to integrate security in the development life cycle. Okay. So yeah, uh, the main goal of DevSecOps is uh, making sure that this automation and this integration with the developments and the operations are done in, in a secure way. And one way that we can do that, it's using the shifting security left approach, uh, where we perform testing uh, since the early stages of the life cycle, right? Uh, most of the companies test for vulnerabilities after the application is deployed, like at dynamic testing. Uh, a good way to start uh, shifting security left is planning security from the beginning and um, creating security requirements for the software that you are creating. And even you can also like participate on uh, sprint planning meetings from your dev development team and suggest some security features that should be added there as well. So yeah, uh, I think that um, creating uh, and testing for security at each stage it's uh, an important thing to do, and it will help you to find issues faster and earlier, and it's gonna cost you less to fix those. So two weeks ago, uh, Veracode released a state of software uh, security report. Uh, it has a lot of uh, interesting information if you're from AppSec, but I think the main, uh, the main thing would be this graphic here, proving that uh, applications that scan their code uh, more frequent, um, they fix their, their their fix rates are higher. So you can, if you if the developer is seeing that issue over and over again, he wants to get rid of that issue and he he's gonna fix that right away. So if it, it, it relates the squint fre frequency with DevOps, right? So if you usually, if you're scanning your code like 300 times a year, you're probably doing that automatic, automatically, I hope. So yeah, this just proves that DevSecOps can increase uh, the fix rate, right? Because I think that um, just finding the vulnerabilities are not uh, interesting, uh, are not enough, sorry. Uh, so you have to understand how to fix the code on the custom application or to pro not just like send your developers a link of the vulnerability on here is a generic way to fix it, right? If they don't understand security very well, they won't be able to fix it by themselves. So yeah, I think it's, uh, there are a lot of discussions and uh, different architectures that what you should be doing to uh, say, to be able to say that you are doing DevSecOps. Uh, from my AppSec perspective, we're, I'm gonna talk about uh, three things that I think it's important. So yeah, automation. Uh, uh, using, there are a lot of tools available uh, for you to automate some of those security checks right now. 
and implementing them in your development pipeline. Uh, first thing that I would say is uh, make sure that you understand and know what are the tools that your developers are using, like the code repository, the ticketing system, the CI tool, so that you can use that and integrate that directly in their tools. So they, it doesn't, there isn't uh, overhead of new tools that they need to learn and use to do DevSecOps. So there is this company that releases uh, a periodic table of DevOps tools that I think it's really nice. And there are some security tools here on the bottom, on the bottom right that you can uh, use. These are not the only ones, but there is more. So yeah, I think this is interesting. So from an application security perspective, uh, I think that three main techniques or tools that you should have on your pipeline uh, are these three. Software composition analysis, that uh, it's basically a tool that it scans your libraries or your third party code and checks uh, for outdated versions or vulnerabilities. So usually most, most of the, the code that we have now in our software are third party, or dependencies, right? So that's a good thing. The other one is static analysis or static AppSec testing, SAST. It scans the custom code that your developers are writing. And the other one is DAST, dynamic AppSec testing, that tests the uh, running application, right? Um, usually, people only do the last one, and it's or either start doing it with the last one, and I think the order here is, is wrong. You should uh, start first with the software composition analysis, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. So some guys from OASP uh, did a research a few years ago, and they, they verified that almost 95% of the applications include any, some kind of open source, right? It's either a library or import or something that you use in your, in your code. And almost 70% almost of those applications contain some kind of uh, vulnerabilities, right? Um, and that's why uh, an SCA tool is important that's gonna check for the components that you're using if they're outdated, right? Uh, you don't wanna be the next uh, Equifax, so yeah. Uh, one thing to be to to note here is that uh, a tool like that will check not just for dependencies that you have, but also for the indirect dependencies. It means that dependencies of the dependencies that you're using. So that's something that's hard to do manually. So you probably need a tool for that. Um, here are, are a few tools that you can use. Uh, the pennies checks from OWASP is free. Uh, you can use mostly on like Java and .NET applications. But there is another one called Nick, with the dog there, uh, that checks for open source code. So you can directly integrate that on your GitHub and check your GitHub repositories for uh, vulnerabilities there on the dependency that you have. Um, the link below there, uh, it's about a talk made by, by another Brazilian. It's in English as well. And so he analyzes those tools and compares them with uh, like a few features and w which one would be uh, better for each scenario. So I think if you wanna use one of those, check that uh, presentation as well. So about dependence check from, oh, it's a project by OWASP. Everyone here uh, knows about OWASP? Can you? Okay, yeah, okay, good. So yeah, uh, it checks for dependencies and basically checks for the NV NVD database uh, if the library is outdated or if it has a known vulnerability, right? It has plugins for Maven, Jenkins, and everything. So you can try using that on your, on your code to check for uh, those libraries. Um, another thing that you should have on your pipeline is a uh, static analysis. Um, and it scans the custom code that you have in your applications. It checks for vulnerabilities there. Uh, some vulnerabilities are easier to find when you have access to the source code, right? Uh, it provides specific uh, 
uh, information about uh, what the problem is, where it's located, and how to fix it. Sometimes it gives you like a, a data flow and uh, provides you the best uh, place to fix, to apply the fix, and it's gonna uh, replicate that fix on all over your code. So that's nice. Um, there are a lot of uh, tools that out there to, that do that already, like uh, Veracode, White Hat. So, uh, but I think uh, a good one that's uh, also free, but it might not be considered a static analysis, but it's good. It's a good start. It's a uh, Sonar Cube. It checks uh, for the code quality of the quality of your code, and it does some security checks, uh, mostly for Java applications. But it's a good way to start introducing secure coding for your devs, so it, you, do, you won't create a lot of friction. So uh, when you start, uh, when you implement another specific SaaS tool, right? It integrates with a lot of CI/CD tools. It, it also checks for like uh, code coverage, and um, it has something called code smells. So it tells you like um, this code doesn't look really well implemented, it might cause some problems. It's not a security issue right now, but you should take a look. So I think that's that that's interesting. And there is the dynamic dynamic app second testing, right? That the the one that you run when your application is deployed. Uh, most companies still only do this, right? And there are a lot of tools available on the market. Uh, but be careful with false positives, right? You don't want to run one tool like this and just uh, generate a PDF report and give you to, to your developers, right? Uh, you should also check if the vulnerabilities are not uh, false positives and make sure that focus on the critical ones first. Um, and also, I think that if you have to choose between SAST and DAST, I think SAS would be a, a better approach because since you have access to the source code, you have a way to find more vulnerabilities. And you can check, use SAS earlier in the life cycle, so uh, the bugs that you found are probably gonna ch be cheaper to fix. So one of the tools that I like to talk about is OASP Zap. Uh, it's, a, it's a proxy uh, to do mostly uh, manual testing on web applications. But it has some automation as well, automated features as well, so you can do automated scannings. And it, you can uh, integrate that in your uh, CI tool, since it has an API and everything, and also plugins for Jenkins. So you can run it before, uh, after a build is generated, and you can already check for a few security issues there. So this is like a desired uh, DevSecOps pipeline with a few tools on each uh, each phase. I think it's uh, interesting to show here that uh, it's not like uh, something that fits uh, on every company. You should adapt for your, your uh, company as well. And uh, for my last remarks are like, devs are not security experts. Uh, we need to train them and make sure that they understand uh, uh, the impact and the vulnerabilities that you found. Uh, try to make security as much part of the development process as writing code. Uh, it has to be transparent, right? So if you, you can't be uh, asking the developers to run a bunch of security tools for you. So that's why aut automation is important. Um, Another thing is that nobody likes bugs, right? Maybe our security experts, but uh, not the developers. It makes them look bad, right? When you bring the, the a lot of like a PDF report with a lot of vulnerabilities, um, especially in a PDF format, right? Uh, I think another thing that's uh, really important it's uh, try to become the developer's best friend, uh, and they will help you without even knowing. That's something that uh, we call the security champions. So usually there is like a one to 100 ratio between security uh, analysts and developers in most companies, right? Uh, so you have to uh, recruit more uh, people for your team to help you with the security issues. So I think that's a, a good way to 
implement security over all your organization. And also remember, uh, remember what matters to the business and try to balance uh, security with features, right? We, we can't uh, implement all the security features we want because sometimes it's going to uh, make the business stop working. Um, I think that's it that I have for today. Here are the reference and links. And if you have any questions, we have still five minutes. No questions? Okay, thank you.